All right, so we're going to do two days on like some word problem type stuff that has to do with exponential functions. So this will be our first day. Um, so we'll talk about how to model a word problem using an exponential function. Then we're going to use that function to find out more information about the scenario that the word problem is about. And then hopefully at the end we'll have some time to review some stuff about percentages. That's just to kind of get us ready for our lesson um, tomorrow. All right. So here's our here's our first example here. Um, it says there are some rentals in a high-rise apartment building, and they get more expensive um, the higher up the apartment is, since the view is better. So you guys can imagine like you have an apartment building, like let's say somewhere fancy, like down by the beach. You know, um, well the higher up it is, the better view you have. So they'll charge more money. Um, they say that the ground floor is eighteen twenty. I yeah, that that's that's. Uh, that's pretty low actually, but that's fine. 1820 a month. And the sixth floor is twenty three oh two point eight eight dollars per month. Okay. Now what they're telling us is that the cost, we're going to assume that this is increasing exponentially. Okay, so that's our assumption. Part A says model this scenario using an exponential function. So um what what they've given us here is they've given us two x values and two y values just like we um, did yesterday and the day before that. So the first thing I want you guys to do is we're going to start by making a, a table here. This first step is the most important step because after that it's all review. But we're going to start by making a table. Okay. Um, so in this case with this apartment building thing we, we have, we're going to say that x represents the floors. And we're going to say that y represents the um, the rent. So I'll just put money there. Okay. So they tell us that um, the ground floor is 1820. And they tell us that the sixth floor is 2302.88. All right. So just so you guys know, for every problem that we're going to be doing today, the, the first one I give you is going to be like the zero value. So on the zero floor, we're going to be at 1820. And then at the sixth floor, we're going to be at 2302. So now I don't know how um, different... I have seen like sometimes, this is kind of like a side note, but like I've either been like in a hotel or apartment building, sometimes they'll refer to the, the ground floor as level one. Sometimes they'll call it like, um, forget what they call it. There's a word for the bottom floor though, but it's not level one. They save that for the next one up. Um, we're just going to say that the ground floor is floor zero. Okay. So just so you know, um, every problem today, the first one will be like that. But so this is actually the most, this step right here is the most important step for the day because the rest of it is pretty much exactly what we've been doing for the past two days. So you've got to be able to turn this into a table. You're going to have some x values, you're going to have some y values. Um, how are you going to know which ones are the x's and which ones are the y's? I think that's a good question. Um, you can ask me and I'll tell you, um, but I think a pretty good rule of thumb is, is that um, one where they give you two values, that's going to end up being your y value. That's kind of like your output amount. Okay. The other one will be your uh, input amount. Um, so, and you'll notice they didn't put zero anywhere in here, right? But just know it's always going to be zero is the first one for, for our word problem today. All right. So after that, though, it's everything that we we learned um, in the past two days. So I want to turn this into an exponential function. Now, um, I would encourage you guys to write the notes down. I'm going to go through it just kind of quick. We're not going to spend a lot of detail on it because, like I said, we spent two days on it already. But I want to turn this into an exponential equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the table. And then that means I'm going to fill in the missing values here. Oops, 
So there's six Bs here. I'm going to write my equation out. You have your first Y value times B to the sixth power equals your final Y value. And then you're going to solve it. pause there for a second we still we're not quite done yet but I'll talk to you about the next step a little bit All right, so uh, let me talk to you about the next step. As you guys know, the next step is I want to find the A value. This is the B, so I want to find the A. Now, the, the way we've done it before, you can still do it that way, but I've got a, a nice shortcut for you. I'm going to do it the old way, and then I'm going to tell you the shortcut, and if you can remember the shortcut, use it. It'll save you a little bit of time. Not a lot, but a little bit. All right, so you know that we're going to take this thing here, Y equals ABX. We're going to plug in the B value that we just solved. We're going to plug in for the X, and we're going to plug in for the Y. Now, I'm going to pick the first one. You could pick the second point, but I, I'm going to pick the first one. I'm going to plug these things in. So I'm plugging in 0 for X, 1820 for Y, and 1.04 for B. It's just what we learned in the past two days. But something interesting happens here because the exponent is zero. Do you guys know what any number raised in zero power is? It's one. Yeah, good job. So an A times one is just going to be A. So we have a, a shortcut here. Instead of doing that, I want you guys to know that that number there, the, so long as this is a zero next to it, that will be your A every time because the a will cancel the b and you'll just be left with a equals that number okay so we can kind of skip that step in the future and just say oh, okay there's my a already i don't have to find it okay and it'll be like that for all the word problems i'm giving you now yesterday's lesson and the lesson before that we didn't have zeros in the table necessarily um so we had to do it that way but i think we probably had one or two problems where i did have a zero on the table in this past few days so technically we could have done that shortcut but i didn't want to get to it just yet until you felt more comfortable with the process but there it is so there's my a um so i'm ready to write my final answer here uh, my answer would be y equals 1820 times 1.04 to the x power and we'll circle that as our answer so that's that's part a
Um, for the next part, we're, part B, we're going to need a, a calculator. So if you guys want to come grab one, if you haven't already, come grab a calculator. So that, that's the end of part A. We, we modeled this scenario using exponent function. That, that's just math speak for write an equation for the, the data. Now remember, though, the most important part of this for today is this first step. You need to be able to know how to turn the data into a table. The one where they give you the two numbers there that match, those are going to be your y values. The first one is going to be zero. The other number is whatever number goes with the second one. So you kind of just have to know how to organize your table there a little bit. All right, now, according to this table here, x represents what floor we're on, and y represents how much money that rent will be for the month. So technically, then, I have here, I've got a, an equation where... I should be able to plug in what floor I'm on, like the fifth floor, the sixth floor, the seventh floor, the eighth floor, and it should tell me how much I'd have to be paying per month. Okay, so that's what part B is all about. Part B says use your function to find the rent on the fourth, on the seventh floor. So for part B, we're going to take our function y equals 1820 times 1.04, which we created in part A. And we're going to plug in 7 for x. And now this is where we're, we're going to use our calculators. And you're basically going to type it in just the way it looks. So it's, you're going to type 1,820. Parentheses. Your parentheses are right here. You need to know where they're at in the calculator. And then put 1.04 in close parentheses. And to make that 7 an exponent, it's the same button we've used for the past two days. It's this little carrot button here. So if you push the power button and then 7. And what's on your computer screen or your calculator screen should look exactly like this. So you should be able to just push enter and get your answer. Uh, times 1820. Just type the whole thing out. It should pretty much look just like it does there. We should be getting two, three, nine, four, uh, point nine, nine, five, eight, blah, blah, blah. And um, when we're talking about money, this is as far as you can go, right, really? And this number here, since the number after it is five or bigger, that bumps up the 9, which bumps up that 9, which bumps that up. So on a multiple choice test, you would, they would probably have this as the answer. But um, sometimes with this rounding stuff on a multiple choice test, you're just going to pick the one that's closest to your answer. It should be really close. It shouldn't be too far off. Um, but my guess is, based on the rounding, they would probably round it up to 2,395. Okay. All right, so there is that. So, um, let's go ahead and do a, uh, a guided practice of this. Now, the most important step is that first step of turning it into a table. So, this is, this is a new problem, and I want you guys to try your, your hand at that first step. Um, see if you can create a table. You should have two x values, two y values. I'll give you a second to try it out, and we'll see how you guys do it. All right, so um, let's go ahead and uh, find the B value. I think I'm just going to, once again, I'm just going to do that part for you, but I'll stop after the B and let you guys do the A. So um, let's see. We have 8 with 0. It's going to be kind of tiny. you got to squish it in there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, I'm not going to write my Bs this time. It was just kind of too tight of a space. But I think, as a matter of fact, you guys might be getting to a place where you might not even need to do this step anymore. And you might be able to just, the only reason I do this is so you can see how many Bs there are. Do you, can you guys see how many Bs there will be? There's going to be nine, right? 
So if you can see that ahead of time, then just you can skip that step, right? So we have the starting amount times b to the ninth power is equal to the final amount. We're going to divide. Um, Four, two, three, two, one. I'm going to raise both sides to the one ninth power then. Well, you know, it's the same B value. All right. I'll pause for a second and we'll do the next part. Are they the same numbers? Are they? I was going to say, what the heck? Sometimes I use a computer program to generate questions. And sometimes they're not very creative and they have like the same problem over and over. All right, so here's, here's my question. I'm going to ask Jessica this one. Jessica, I don't have to do any work to find the A value. I already know what it is. What, what would it be? That's right, it's going to be that, that one. That will always be your A, only if it's next to a zero, okay? And that, that, that can apply to any situation I give you with these types of problems. So we have our equation then. My equation is y equals 1861, 1.04 to the x power. So we can skip that step of finding A because it's right there. We don't have to show our work for that. If you guys are in the mood for another possible shortcut, I don't know if you've noticed this. I'll leave it up to you. But have you guys noticed basically what we do here to find B is always the same. You divide the last Y value by the first Y value, and then you raise it to a power that's the reciprocal of how many Bs there are, right? So, you just take your last y value, you divide it by your first y value, and you're going to raise it to the reciprocal of how many b's there are. So, you might feel like when I solve these problems for you guys, like when I'm figuring out the answer, I just type that right in my calculator away. I don't write any of this. I would just look at this and type in 2648.78 divided by 1861 in parentheses to the power of 1 ninth, and I have my answer for b right away. So, because I see it's just the same thing over and over and over again. And that's what math formulas are. They're just people saying, oh, I'm doing the same process over and over again, so we'll just turn it into letters and it represents what we always do. But anyway, just some thoughts for you. Um, all right, part B, I'm going to let you guys do part B. So go ahead and do part B, and I'll ask you guys what you get for that. This 20 represents years, and in our table we said x represents years. So you're plugging 20 in for x, and you can solve for y, which represents the amount of money that you have in the account. All right, so um, let's see here. How are we doing with this time? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys about five minutes for this one. Um, so go ahead and go as far as you can with it. This is a student practice. I'm not going to walk you through it step by step. Just do the whole thing. Part A is creating an equation. Part B is plugging in a number, and that's it. Um, then we're going to move on to a new topic. All right, guys. So I think we'll go ahead and move on to our, our last bit for the day here. Um, so this last bit is actually just like basic math review. Um, but we're all a little bit rusty with percentages, so I, I'll, we're going to review percentages. The reason we're going to do that is because we're going to be working with percentages on our lesson tomorrow. And I just want to make sure you guys are ready for that, okay? So, um, here we go. 
We're going to talk about three different percentages. We're going to talk about just finding a basic percentage. Then we're going to talk about percent increase. And then we're going to talk about percent decrease. So we're going to talk about three different types of percent problems. So we're going to start off with just the basic idea with percentages. So um, I'm going to write something. You, you don't have to write this part because it's just kind of like front loading your mind with some information. But what a percent is, is it, it changes something from being a fraction out of 100. You know, so like, for instance, um, if you have one-fourth, okay, well, that looks like this. You're thinking of that as four pieces. But what a percent does is it, it breaks everything up into hundreds instead. And to do that, you would put 25 slices in each one of these because four times 25 is 100. And so what you really end up with is there's 25 here, and there's 100 all together. So 1 fourth is 25%. Okay, so basically what a percent is, is it's just transferring a, a part in a whole. It's, it's translating them into out of 100. That's what a percent is. All right, so if I tell you that I want you to find 27% of 42, that means I'm looking for 27 out of 100. Now, take your calculators and divide 27 by 100 for me real quick. What do you get? All right, and that, that's not a coincidence. That'll happen every time. Whenever you have a percentage, it's out of 100. And when you do that, basically all it does is it takes your number and it moves the decimal, which you can imagine it being here, it moves it over twice when you divide something by 100, so it looks like this. So if you ever want to change a number into a percentage, that's all you do. So if I said 58%, well, if you divide that by 100, you're going to get 0.58. Or if I say, now this is a tricky one, 5%. You guys know what that would be? It would be 0 0.05. Why? Because if you think of this as 5, you move the decimal once, you got to move it twice. So if I put the decimal here, there must be a zero there. So the point is, is that anytime you're changing a percent to a decimal, you just move the decimal to the left twice, all right? So I want to find 27% of 42. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a decimal. We said that would be what? 0 0.27. To find a percentage of something, all you do is multiply. So 27% of 42 is just going to be 0.27 times 42. So let's do that on our calculator. Um, I'm getting 11.34. So that 11.34 apparently is 27% of 42. Okay. So change the number, the percentage into a decimal and multiply it. Okay. Um, why don't you guys try this one really quick on your own, see if you can get it. I'll give you a second. So 5% at the decimal is 0 0.05. You multiply that by the 80 and that's 4. So apparently 4 is 5% of 80. All right, that's a, so that's a basic percent. Now we're going to talk about percent increase. So um, let's say a shirt costs 28 bucks. And the people at the store decide they're going to increase the price of the shirt by 25% because Mr. Bailey's wearing it. Now everybody wants one. Okay. I'm just kidding. Okay. So um, find the new cost. How, how do we do that? Well, I'm going to show you, once again, I'm going to show you the, the long thought process behind this, but then I'm going to show you a, a little bit of a, a quicker method. But, um, you know, matter of fact, let's just write it like this. Um, no, 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 I take it back. Don't, don't write this. Just watch. All right, so we start off with a shirt that's $28. What's 100% of 28? It's 28, right? I want to increase the price by 25%. In other words, I want that the store order now wants to charge 125%. Right? So 
what would this be? What would this percentage be if I move the decimal twice to the left? 1.25. Okay, that's it. So, um, what we're going to do then is we're going to say that you're going to do one, I would write this down, plus 0.25. This is, this is another way to think about it. So instead of starting up here with the percentages, instead of thinking of it as 100, just think of it as one, because that's what 100 is. If you take the decimal and move it over twice, it would just be one, right? And instead of thinking of this as 25, think of it as 0.25, because that's what it would be if you move it twice. So instead of thinking of it as 100 times 25, or plus 25, think of it as 1 plus 0.25, okay? And the reason I want you to think about that is that's how we're going to think about our lesson tomorrow, okay? So, now I know the, pers I, I know the cost now, right? It's 1.25, so I'm going to multiply that by what? 28. And that, that'll tell me the new price of the shirt. So if you, if you multiply 28 by 1.25, it's going to give you 125% of 28. So let, let's do that and see what we get. I get 35. Okay. All right, let's, let's do another one together before I give you a practice. Some of you guys might be ready for it. That's awesome, but um, I just don't want to leave anybody behind. So I feel like this is a little bit more... Um, taxing on the brain here. So let me let me do this one with you guys. The the second one. I'm going to give you another one after that. I'll make it up off the top of my head. Um, so first of all, Aliyah, what is the decimal version of three percent? Um. So the way you said it's wrong, but I wonder if you would have written it right. So because. The fact that you said zero makes me think so. Because if, if you if you wrote this, that's actually 30%. But it would be 0 0.03. And why is that? Because if you think of this as three, if you move the decimal twice, one, that would be 0.3. Two, well, there's nothing here, so you need to put a zero. So that's 0 0.03. And if that's confusing to you, you can always find just by dividing this number by 100, your calculator will tell you. Just do 3 divided by 100, it'll be 0 0.03. All right, so there's that. Um, I want to add this percentage to what, Shakir? Mm -hmm. We're going to do 1 plus 0 0.03. And, and what does that come out to be today? 1.03, good. So that's my number. Now I'm going to ask Vidal, what do I do with that number? Multiply it with the Yep. You multiply it by 50,000. And what that's going to do is that's going to take my 50,000 and tell me what's 103% of it. Why is it 103? Because we started with 100, and now we're adding 3% onto it, so it's 103%. So um, let's do that and see what we get. I get... Fifty-one five hundred. Fifty-one thousand five hundred. All right. So let me uh, let me give you guys an, an, another problem to try on your own here, without me walking you through it. Um, time here. Yeah, let's do that. So let's try this one down here, the one about the car that I just added. The value of a classic car increases by 10%. 
If the original price was twenty thousand, what's the new price? All right, so we're going to have a percent decrease, right? So what do you guys think I'm going to do instead of adding this time? I'm going to subtract. That's the only difference. So write this with me. What's 25% as a decimal? 0.25. And instead of adding it to 1, we're going to? Now you might want to use a calculator for that. I don't know. It's up to you. But 1 take away 0.25 about 0.75. That's what you're going to multiply by the 28 this time. So if they ever decrease, instead of adding that percent, you're going to subtract that percent. And that's where we're going to call it quit. So that'd be a $21. All right. So go ahead and pack up. We'll call it a day. We will see you guys tomorrow for more fun things.